Hello and welcome to Manel Goats Racing and today we are, as you might be able to tell from what's on the screen, uh, unfortunately my face is probably ruining the pictures, but it is the new Race Sim Studio 1970 Storm V8 and I have to say it is a lovely looking car. Now I'll run uh, a few piggies from the showroom and show you the two versions of the car with the various wing adjustments I'll probably have to edit the thing to make it a little bit smoother because it was a little bit uh, hit and miss about trying to swap between the different um, arrows on it but uh, once we've done that I'll come back and I'll talk a bit about the car and then we'll try driving it back in a moment Right, hello, uh, back again, hopefully. Let's see when I managed to do the edit correctly. Now, the car, what is it? Well, it's uh, based on a 1970 Formula 1 car. You might have a bit of a guess from the fact that it's this particular blue, which is in fact the French rating blue, that it is uh, based on the car that Tyrrell uh, drove for, or used for some of 1970 with uh, Jackie Stewart and all of 1974 their second driver who they had two drivers for 1970 one of them decided he got an eye injury after the third race he decided it was getting too damn dangerous and retired um, and I'll try and remember his name it's uh, Double Barrel Johnny something uh, yeah memory like a sieve anyway what's the car well it's the as far as I could tell, uh, March 701 
Now, the March 701 was March Engineering's very first Formula One car, uh, DFV powered. Uh, for the two previous years, uh, Tyrrell had used the Matra cars. They used the Matra MS10 in 1968, which was the first year that Tyrrell Racing Organisation was actually in Formula One. Uh, they had a joint venture, effectively, with uh, Matra and they were the Matra International team as opposed to the Works team which I believe was called Matra Sport and the Works team used the Matra V12 engine whereas the Tyrrell run cars actually uh, used the DFV uh, Jackie Stewart was the second in the 1968 championship and the following year in 1969 the car was improved all the little niggles they got with it were uh, ironed out and it was went from the MS-10 to the MS-80 I think was the designation and that car won the world championship with uh, Jackie Stewart of the world uh, at the end of 1969 beginning of the 70 Matra uh, had a merger with Simca who were uh, a subsidiary of Chrysler and because of that uh, Tyrrell decided they couldn't run the Matra cars. Matra wanted them, the new Matra conglomerate, wanted them to run with the Matra V12 engines. Well, one of the people who supplied money to uh, Tyrrell to get him into Formula 1 and continue to uh, back him in 1970 was Ford. So you couldn't really have a Chrysler-owned engine in the back of a, a Ford-financed car which would be a little bit iffy. The other supplier was uh, of money was ELF, as you can see by the, I think they're ELF symbols, uh, on there. And they had an agreement with Renault that basically precluded uh, any of the people they were supplying money to partnering up with Simca. So all in all, um, Tyrrell was in a bit of a dodgy position whereby they had to find an alternative car. Now, Tyrrell decided they would actually build their own car, which they did on the QT, and it actually came out for the last three rounds of the year, which was the Tyrrell 001, uh, which turned out to be a very successful car, eventually. It was quick, but a bit fragile uh, for a first three races at the end of the year. But for the majority of the year, they actually ran this March Engineering uh, 701. There was also a March uh, Works car, uh, there was an STP international car, which was driven by Mario Andretti, not for all of the rounds. There were a couple of privately entered cars as well. One of them was uh, Ronnie Peterson, the other one was a German driver who'd done the German Grand Prix for about five years. But that was the only Grand Prix he did, otherwise he was mostly a uh, sort of touring stroke endurance type sports car driver. Uh, but what's it like to drive? Well, that's a damn fine question, and we'll find out. It does have lots of little niceties with it. I will say the very first thing you should do... I didn't mean to press that button. <laughs> Wally. Uh, the very first thing you do when you get this is read the must-read PDF file that comes with it, because you have to have a specific rod... Uh, mod. What? A specific mod? to um, get it to work because it has uh, a mod that it uses which if you don't have it it will just get so far into loading up and just come out and go cancelled uh, which is what I did and start with so don't do what I did do what I say um, I can't remember what the mod is called but you can uh, get it from race department but it does mean it works after you've done that uh, the two different variants uh, that's the button I meant to hit. Um, come with different aerodynamic packages. There are five options on this and two on the special version. If you're outside the car, and hopefully you saw it when I did it, and you might see it there, the uh, the wings have changed. Yeah, you can just about see it. Um, the rear wing's changing as well, obviously. But when you adjust the wing, you will see that uh, 
it physically moves as you adjust it so you can actually see it doing things. Um, lower numbers in the aero package are lower downfalls. On the special version, the lowest package is actually no rear wing at all and just a vestigial front wing. Apparently that's what they ran, effectively no wings at Monza. Uh, I believe that was Monza where going into parabolic down the back straight where Jochen Rint got killed. That was actually nothing to do with the aero, although the, apparently with no aero the, the Lotus was extremely twitchy to drive, but he actually had a brake failure I believe. Uh, Ended up dying and was posthumously awarded the title at the end of the year, the one and only time that's ever happened. But uh, back to the 701 and this particular version from Racing Studio. It is, I have to say, beautifully modelled. It really is. Um, now we're going to run the lowest package, Danvor's package, just because. I don't know how good, bad, or indifferent the different packages will be round here. We're actually going to run around Silverstone because, well, it's me, I always do. But uh, actually, in 1970, the British Grand Prix was at uh, Brands Hatch. But there is not a version of Brands Hatch from that era in a set of Corsa. Same as there's no Zandvoort, no Harama, uh, no Kyalami. So basically, you're very limited on what you could have run. Uh, there is a Watkins Glen which is the 1970 was the last time that particular, the older layout was about before they they went to the uh, boot layout they have now, which hasn't changed since 1971, basically. Uh, but unfortunately, that particular uh, layout is, or that particular version of uh, the Watkins Glen is a tad bumpy. It's like running around on a corrugated tarmac around some of the corners, so... I would have gone for that, but uh, I didn't like it. Uh, Sherrard, there is a version of that, which was actually used for the French Grand Prix in 70. So, overall, let's see what it drives like. I've just remembered I haven't pressed my pedals yet, so uh, my might walk. And I have... Oh, I had remembered it. Mind the wall. I don't know why there's such a weird pit lane here, but I thought I'd forgotten to turn on the H pattern, that would have been embarrassing. Now, I have to say, FFB, not bad to start with. Try getting the right gear, otherwise you'll kill the engine and gearbox. It's got really, really nice feel to it. And uh, it is, as you would hope, pretty good from Racing Studio. Turned in a bit prematurely. Yeah, really nice feel. It goes where you point it. It feels like it's uh, nicely connected to the ground without being whoop, excessive. And oh, I missed a gear. Had a trouble using an H pattern. Sometimes it works without the clutch and sometimes it doesn't. And I didn't turn in early enough. Oh, I just about made it. I'm um, well out of practice with using the H pattern, unfortunately. So, uh, we'll keep one to turn in a bit early just to make sure it actually bites and it's, it doesn't understeer that badly. So, it is really nicely balanced, even on this lowest. I think I have driven all of the uh, even aero packages just for a lap or two just to test, and they all feel reasonably well balanced at default. As you would hope from. Racing Studio, Oop. way too early turning. But it's, uh, it's a car you can drive for a lot of laps and go, yeah, I'm really enjoying that. It's not difficult to drive, particularly. Goes more or less where you point it. It feels really good. Have a 
was not seventh gear, that was fifth gear. You can sometimes get the back end to step out a little bit on the turning if you're uh, changed down a bit wrong. And it doesn't hugely rotate on the power. It's not like the old, old, old images of this uh, car completely bloody sideways out of every corner. It's very centrally balanced. So. Yep, I'm making the right pigs out of the gear change and I'll see this ball away. Oh, I clutch on so I didn't have to worry about it. My pedals I'm currently using don't seem to lend themselves too well to doing heel toe for some reason. And I think I've knackered the gearbox. I'm not sure what damage setting I got at the moment. If I got full damage on it, it's uh, quite easy to damage a gearbox. Which is. Uh, One of my pet peeves about AC is just how fucking easy it is to damage the gearbox in it if you're using the H pattern. It's a bit too damn easy, in fact. I got to break in time. No. So, overall, it's a really nice car to drive. I said uh, I need a bit more time with my uh, H pattern to get it right, but all all in here, so see you can get a nice piece of rotation out of the car, even though it's got a reasonable amount of wing on it. As I said with the uh, the other version of the car, the special, the S version, it's. Um, when you run it without wings, it will hit 200 miles an hour around uh, Monza without too many problems. But it don't go around the corners quite as well when you do that. I think it's about 180 miles an hour with the special with four wings, and just over 200 miles an hour you will have to change the gearing. And there's no uh, final drive; you don't you change the individual gears. So you sort of got one notch on each, and it will hit 200 miles an hour without too many problems. But it is an extremely nice car to drive, just be careful with it, because it's a bit breakable, which is actually fairly true of cars of the period. I think the Spanish Grand Prix, which was the race that Jackie Stewart won in the car, um, was round two or round three that year. I believe there were five finishes <laughs> because Stuart's teammate in the other uh, Tyrrell was fifth and actually last, I believe. And that was um, was that the one that he said was his last race. But uh, really nice car. It's beautifully put together it's nice in every way it just feels good it handles nicely believably goes where you put it but it's, it's not excessively uh, oh it's just too easy to drive it's just it's got a nice balance to it so you can do things like that and give it a bit of welly get it Drifting it around quite nicely. And all in all, just wonderful piece of engineering. And it sounds nice. Probably uh, nine layers of sounds or something on it. It does have a nice little. PDF booklet that's worth a read to uh, tell you what they've done with it and everything else. Things like, uh, is it if you operate the wipers, is it? Uh, the driver lifts his uh, 
visor. Is it the white? I'd have to reread it, but yeah. All in all, I have to say that it's just one really nice, fun car to drive. It's really, uh, well, it's, it's planted, but without being over the top and it feels like the tyres are doing sensible things. It's, it's got a nice over the limit feeling. It's, it doesn't deal particularly well with really bumpy circuits as is whether or not you can tune it out i don't know but in st stock fashion it does bounce a bit over the over the bumpy bits but then we're talking about uh 50 year old technology as far as springs and dampers are concerned so yeah you wouldn't expect it to be up to modern standards um all in uh less than four quid from racing studio directly do I recommend it? Fuck yes. Um, my only issue with having a car like this is trying to get age-appropriate tracks to drive it around. Although, hopefully, with the the amount of different um, downforce configurations it's got, it should work well around modern circuits as well, because modern circuits have the issue of they're designed for a different type of car, realistically and what you got here and what you'd have in a modern car uh chalk and cheese so find some age appropriate or more age appropriate circuits to drive around so a nice flowing circuits obviously something like the noise cliff should work quite well um silverstone is well worth a shot uh what else uh, the monaco 1967 worked quite well as much as i don't like the circuit but you can't have everything in life. Um, and there was Monza as well, 67. That worked really well as well. So, and that's with, with or without the oval. The oval was a bit bumpy. Uh, I did find a couple of times when I tried it out that uh, I got bounced into the barrier on the outside. Um, and like I said, you might want to turn down the, uh, the damage a bit to save your... To save your sanity when it comes to killing the gearbox. I'm very good at killing gearboxes in a set of course. Huh? Must be my technique. Or lack thereof, I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Get it. Have fun with it. Uh, what it would be like to actually race side by side with a whole load of these, I don't know. They've got um, plenty of different uh, liveries with it. Uh, something that looks a bit like the Gold Leaf Lotus that was run by. Did they run that on the works and the Graham Hill? Graham Hill was driving for Mr. Walker that year, I believe. No, not for the works Lotus team. So, get it, have fun with it, do what I'm going to do, which is just drive around and try not to break it too much um and uh, enjoy it so that's my quick review of the uh lotus i'll pull up the uh, the replay and uh, put it in the corner so you can see it but uh, yeah lovely car beautifully modeled absolutely probably one of uh, racing studios most detailed models uh absolutely stunning so give it a go um but uh, for me, for now, 20 minutes is enough for anybody, isn't it? Um, enjoy your racing, have fun, and uh, I'll catch you soon. Goodbye. Where's my button?